used to be difficult for personal computers to do more than one thing at a time. Starting with Windows 95, it's easy. Start multitasking. Start Windows 95. On the 24th of August 1995, Bill Gates got up on stage at Microsoft's campus in Redmond, Washington to introduce the world to Windows 95, the latest version of the company's famous operating system. With Windows 95, Microsoft wanted to improve the usability of the Windows user interface. Windows 3.1, the then current version of Windows, released in 1992, had become a massive success for the company. However, users encountered frequent problems whilst trying to navigate the system, often finding it difficult to know how to access applications, as well as to find out which applications were running and how many instances of each application there were at any one time. To combat this problem, Microsoft set out to find a more intuitive user interface for its next iteration of Windows. The person that would help them to do that was Daniel Oran, a behavioural psychologist who joined the Windows development team in November 1992. In early August 2021, almost 30 years since his work on Windows, I approached Daniel to ask if he would be interested in sharing his story in the form of an interview. He was more than willing, and in the weeks that followed, members of the Windows community both on YouTube and elsewhere online sent in their suggestions for questions to be put to Daniel. What you are about to hear are the questions I asked Daniel and his responses, narrated by a group of nine well-known members of the Windows community on YouTube. With their help, for the first time, we can hear in more detail than ever before the story behind the development of arguably the most recognisable and influential user interface in the history of operating systems. This is its story. As an undergrad at Harvard, I was the last student of the behavioral psychologist B.F. Skinner, who served as my thesis advisor, and I was inspired by his passion for applying behavioral science to make things better. That's what I've tried to do in my own career, in fields as disparate as software, politics, and healthcare. Both serendipity and an inclination for working across disciplines have carried me in interesting directions. For example, I worked with Professor Skinner on chimpanzee language research, which turned out to be my first experience designing a product, although not a very successful one. I spent a few weeks building a huge, chimp-safe keyboard out of plexiglass and wood and writing software that connected it to a state-of-the-art Commodore 64 computer. Then I hauled this unwieldy contraption across the country for testing with two skeptical customers, Sherman and Austin, a couple of high-spirited chimpanzees. The three of us hit it off, and we had a lot of fun monkeying around, but Sherman and Austin had no interest in my goofy keyboard. I went back to the drawing board, trying to design something that would get them interested. In an era where human-centered design was little known, I became an early practitioner of chimp-centered design. Fast forward a few years, after I'd left psychology grad school at Harvard to work at Microsoft, I was assigned a product, Windows whose customers were often as unenthusiastic as Sherman and Austin had been. While I was in grad school at Harvard, I sent an email to a college friend who worked at Microsoft. This was probably in early 1992. It might sound hard to believe now, but at that point, email systems weren't routinely connected to the internet. So, my friend was actually impressed that I'd figured out how to send email across the internet from Harvard to Microsoft. He told me I should apply for a job. I didn't apply right away, but not long after I won a fellowship to spend the summer in Japan doing research on human-computer interaction. When I got back from Japan, the idea of working for a software company sounded more appealing to me than going back to grad school, so I sent a resume to my friend at Microsoft and I eventually went out to Seattle to interview. I got offers from a few teams, including Excel and Windows. Although my friend discouraged me from joining the Windows team, it sounded more interesting to me. So that's the offer I accepted in October 1992. So Daniel was the program manager for the personal systems group at Microsoft, and he was working on the interface for Chicago, which was the code name of the operating system, which would eventually become Windows 95. 
And Daniel was excited when he got the job. He hadn't lived on the West Coast before, so the location was appealing to him. But another interesting thing was, he wasn't a Windows user at the time. He was coming from an Apple background. And also, bear in mind, this is 1992. Microsoft was nowhere near as big as they are now. In fact, a funny story he shared was, when he told his grandmother about the job, <laughs> she heard the name Microsoft and she was like, do they make microwave ovens? My first day at Microsoft was the first time that I had used Windows for more than a few minutes, and I found it so confusing. I remember asking my manager how to do something really basic in Windows. He laughed and said, how did we hire you? When I interviewed, I don't think it ever came up that I hadn't been a Windows user. Looking back, not being an experienced Windows user turned out to be a huge advantage. There's a great quip that's been attributed to the media theorist Marshall McLuhan. It probably wasn't the fish that discovered water. In my work, I've tried hard to think outside the fish tank, as it were, and contribute a different perspective. Because I hadn't been immersed in Windows previously, I think I was able to see things that long-time users didn't notice. In the fall of 1992, Cairo was a work in progress. It was being designed as a potential UI for a future version of the operating system that shipped in 1993 as Windows NT. Initially, our plan was to take whatever UI elements the Cairo team had been designing and integrate them into Chicago. Mostly, though, that didn't work out. It was easy for us to add Cairo's next inspired grey 3D look and feel, but when we implemented the functional elements of Cairo, the way that people use the computer for basic tasks like opening programs or finding files, we found in usability tests that the Cairo UI was too hard to figure out. And that was really the genesis of my work. I was trying to make something that was easier. I designed the start menu and taskbar for Windows Codename Chicago. I was not involved in designing for Windows Codename Cairo. When I got to Microsoft in November 1992, I think the Chicago builds looked pretty much like Windows 3.1. Soon after, the Shell team implemented some of the UI elements designed by the Cairo team. This image is probably a bitmap mockup, not a screenshot from running software, but it's close to what Chicago builds looked like in early 1993. And that's around the time that we began usability testing, ultimately concluding that the Cairo UI wouldn't allow us to achieve our goal of making Windows easier and more appealing for a general, non-expert audience. Initially, I worked on the UI for the Windows Control Panel, or Property Sheets as we were calling them. Here's one that I designed on the 19th of November 1992, my fourth day at Microsoft, with a little picture of a monitor that lets you preview the wallpaper or screensaver that you've selected. I was also focused on what we called User Assistance, which was basically the help files. I had this notion that we'd transform the static help function into something more interactive. It wasn't my job at first to redesign the shell, but when our usability testing demonstrated the limitations of the Cairo UI, I realised that we needed something different. Watching people struggle in the usability tests was my primary source of ideas. I was trying to solve the problems that they had. For example, I learnt that many novice users had trouble double-clicking icons, so I came up with the concept of one-click. The user just had to click once to open a program or do anything else. I was well versed in the history of the graphical user interface, going back to work at SRI and Park in the 1960s and 1970s. There was even an old Xerox star at Microsoft that I played with. <laughs> Looking back, I guess the big idea behind my start menu and taskbar was to put what people did most often in one central, easy to access location. I probably was inspired by Alan Kay's dictum, simple things should be simple and complex things should be possible. Mainly, I made things bitmaps in paint and prototypes in Visual Basic, and showed them to my colleagues and people in usability testing sessions. Looking back, Visual Basic was incredibly important to my work. Visual Basic was only about a year old when I got to Microsoft, and it empowered me to do more than just make sketches. 
in a couple of hours, I was able to make a prototype that you could actually try out. There's no substitute to that. VB turned out to be crucial for getting feedback from users and sharing my design ideas with colleagues. I have a folder full of old bitmaps and visual basic prototypes from Microsoft, and the timestamps are still readable, so I can see when I worked on various projects. Initially, in May 1993, I came up with a simplified shell that I called Clearview. It had a tab design similar to the way that modern web browsers look. Then I did virtually all of my work on the start menu and taskbar in June 1993. Later in the year, there were some elaborations like the notification area on the right side of the taskbar that I designed. But to my surprise, I'm realizing now that I did most of the work in one month. I should add though, that I had spent about six months before that immersed in usability testing. So I came to the work with plenty of food for thought. I think I really understood our customers' needs pretty well. Start was a replacement for my initial name, System. In usability testing, people were uneasy about clicking a button with that name. I guess it sounded too technical or complicated. That's why I changed it to Start, which I had also used in Clearview, the simplified shell I designed previously. I intended for that menu to be the first step for the most common tasks, and Start was both a description and a hint. In usability tests, people immediately knew what to do. I don't remember for sure, but I often worked late into the night, especially when I was creating VB prototypes, and my night owl schedule usually overlapped with the hours of the developer in the office across the hall, Ian Ellison Taylor. He probably saw a lot of the stuff that I came up with as early as anyone else. So as you may expect, new ideas draw many critics, and not everybody liked Daniel's start menu name or design at first. Some people asked him if it could be sexier, whatever the heck that means in terms of computer interfaces, in 1992 especially. Another higher up said that the buttons in the taskbar kind of reminded him of push buttons in car radios, and some people just simply didn't like the name start. So in 1994, Daniel wasn't sure if this next version of Windows was even going to sell with his start menu design, but ultimately it did. And the biggest reason was because of the data from the user tests. It just beat everything else, every other design and label and name. It was just simple enough for the users to identify and get along with. Microsoft had just built a suite of usability testing rooms with one-way mirrors and cameras, so we benefited from that. We would bring subjects in one at a time and give them a written set of tasks to complete. I would sit in the control room with Kent Sullivan, who ran the testing sessions, and watch users through the one-way mirror. We would record how long it took to complete tasks and also jot down our impressions. Each session lasted about an hour. So speaking of usability tests, here was a funny story that Daniel recalled. In this usability test, they had a tester who was an experienced computer user, but he hadn't used graphical user interfaces before. Nowadays, that's common, of course, but in 1990, that was understandable. So the task they gave him was to open up Microsoft Write, and it took the user about 20 minutes to figure out how to do that. So after that session was over, the developer told Daniel that we have a problem, which kind of surprised him because according to him, many developers would just say things were fine and they would move on, but that wasn't the case this time. But then he explained what he thought was the problem. We need smarter customers. He said that half jokingly, hopefully. And then he said, this guy is a moron. And Daniel looked over the questionnaire that the tester filled out, and it said that he was an engineer at Boeing, specifically with propulsion systems. He was literally a rocket scientist. Even a rocket scientist couldn't figure out Windows. So Daniel and the developer laughed about it, but in reality, it was a truly defining moment for the Chicago developer team. They needed to make Windows easier to use. At least easy enough for a rocket scientist.
If the start menu and taskbar hadn't been so successful in usability testing, I would have continued to try to design something better. Fortunately, that wasn't necessary. Searching in Windows was pretty rudimentary in 1993. There was no full text indexing, so it didn't work that well. It wouldn't have made sense to emphasize searching. At the time, I really liked my earlier clear redesign, but looking back, we were probably better off with my star menu and taskbar. I don't think Clearview would have scaled well or survived as long. I was designing using the UI widgets that I was familiar with in the early 90s. Buttons and menus were fundamental, so it was natural for me to use those as the basis. There wasn't a formal process. I designed the start menu and taskbar for the top of the screen, and for years after, that's how I arranged them on my own computer. But for a variety of reasons, including differing aesthetic judgments and concerns about any perceived similarity to the Mac, there was pressure to move everything to the bottom. In 1993, I never would have predicted that my start menu and taskbar would last so long. It's surprising to me. I'm amazed that my designs became the central elements of the most widely used software in the world, and they're still being used nearly 30 years later. It's awesome and almost inconceivable that billions of people have used my start menu and taskbar. I never would have imagined that in 1993. I think that my training in behavioral psychology and my research experience were important for my work at Microsoft. They gave me some useful tools, and at that point, a unique perspective, for understanding how people use computers. I think the work with teams in particular gave me some ideas about how to make things easier, using the skills I had developed in studying behavior and designing for it. I enjoyed the design work I did. It was such a creative and productive period. My experience working there was one of the most memorable and impactful things I've done in my career. Alas, I'm not a daily Windows user anymore, so I haven't closely followed the evolution, but it's still fun for me to see my start menu and taskbar on other people's screens. From a distance, it seems like the changes have been mainly cosmetic. In Windows 11, I've heard that the start menu and taskbar will be centered. I guess that gives it a slightly different appearance, but it seems to ignore Fitz Law, which suggests that it's better to put buttons in corners where the mouse pointer is caught by the edges of the screen, effectively providing a larger target area. It would be awesome to redesign the Windows UI for how people actually use computers today. It is nice that my design is still being used, but I created it for such a different world. Instead of incrementally improving such an old design, I tried to come up with something that better serves today's computer users. When you redesign a product with such a huge user base like Windows, eventually you have to figure out how to bridge from the old to the new. But I would begin with a clean sheet of paper and try to do what I did in 1992 to 1993, design the UI around what users want to accomplish. Sure, I think I would enjoy that. In answering these questions, I'm reminded of how much fun I had working on Windows. It's kind of you to frame it that way. The truth is though that I rarely think about it. I guess it is pretty cool and really amazing. I've worked on so many projects in my career. It's funny that work from 6 or 8 months in 1992 to 1993 far eclipses anything else. There was a large amount of luck in this, the serendipity of being in the right place at the right time with the right background, but there was also something else important. I was working across disciplines, bringing insights from one to the other. My chimp keyboard was mostly a failure, but the start menu and taskbar that I created for Windows have succeeded and endured in ways that I never could have imagined.
Thank you so much for joining us on this journey through Daniel's fascinating story and We're Not Done Yet, because in a short moment, I will invite some of the narrators that you've just been listening to to share some of their own personal thoughts on the impact and legacy of Daniel's start menu and taskbar. However, just before that, I want to give my sincere thanks to all of the people that you've been listening to telling Daniel's story. Thank you all so much for your willingness to be part of this exciting project, and for taking the time to make your contributions. Without you all, this video could not have been possible, and I'm incredibly humbled but also very proud of what we have created. And lastly, a big thank you to Daniel himself for your truly remarkable work on Windows and contributions to driving the continual improvements to user interface design that we still see happening today. And I'm sure many, if not all, of those interfaces have been influenced or inspired by your work in some form or another. Hello everybody, I'm Michael MJD, and I want to give a huge thank you to Major Sky 17 for having me aboard on this project. The start menu is something that has just become so conjoined with the Windows experience that we don't really think a whole lot about it in our day-to-day -day lives. It's just kind of there, whenever we need it. We open it up to launch programs, shut down our PC, whatever we need to do, and that's the way it's been for so many years now. Well, except when Windows 8 came along, but that's besides the point. Anyways, it was really neat to look back at the Start Menu's history and see Daniel's role in it. So, huge thank you to him for his amazing contribution to Windows, and thanks to all of you for watching. Hi, I'm Zach Bowden, a writer for WindowsCentral.com. Thanks to Windows on Windows for giving me the chance to narrate some of these answers, and thanks to Daniel for taking the time to answer the questions. Your insights into the Start Menu and Taskbar have been incredibly insightful. Hey, it's me, Andromat. I'd like to briefly talk about my start menu experience. It all started with Windows 2000, on my family computer. Being a little kid back in the day, we all were, I would play 3D pinball, explore the Windows folder for hours, running random executables, applying icons from shell 32 to folders and whatnot. But guess where it all started? At the start menu. Of course, where else? I don't exactly remember the first time I used it, but I can confidently tell that I didn't ask parents on how to interact with Windows. The design was that obvious not only to a 5-year-old me, but even to my 84-year-old great-grandma. I can guarantee you, there would be no Windows that we know and love today without Daniel's fantastic contribution. Thank you so much for making Windows accessible to everyone and setting such a high bar in UX design so early in computing history. Hey, it's Phil from OS First Timer here. My channel is mostly about looking at the design and function of various operating systems and software from the perspective of my parents who are a little tech illiterate, thus providing a good base for knowing what kind of interfaces are intuitive for a non-experienced computer user. Hi, I'm Diana from OS First Timer. And after trying out countless operating systems, I can honestly say that those with a taskbar and start menu are so much easier to use than those without these UI elements. The great impact of the taskbar and start menu can not only be seen across modern versions of Windows, but also across Linux distros and other operating systems as well. Greetings, Clint from the YouTube channel LGR here, and yeah, Windows 95, any kind of mid-90s computing, that is my jam, especially over on my channel. Uh, that whole era is incredibly special to me and just highly memorable and nostalgic, but it's honestly just a lot of fun to go back and use still in its highly effective simplicity. And yeah, the taskbar and the start menu, I, oh uh, dude, I still remember seeing that for the first time as a kid. It was one of those ads on TV, like the start me up thing. And it was just like, what is that? I want that. It looked so much easier to use than anything that I had on Windows 3.1. And uh, you know, even one of our uh, friends uh, at the time, they had Tabworks installed in their compact. And that was pretty cool. But the basic operation of the start menu and just having things along the bottom there, the taskbar was, 
I mean, I was a kid, but it still felt like a revolution, and it was so exciting. And I wanted Windows 95 so bad. We just had a Packard Bell with Windows 3.1 at the time, and I still had that up until 1997, when we got an Acer Aspire desktop with Windows 95. And I was just like, oh, look, all my stuff is here. I got uh, settings and documents and programs. Look at these all. Gonna... I was really excited. <laughs> And it's still just a joy to go back and use because it's so effective. Like it seems obvious in hindsight, but where would we be without that? I don't know. I don't want to know. I still get kind of offended when uh, <laughs> Microsoft or whoever else does a new taskbar start menu setup and they change things around. I like it like this, man, more or less. And just going from something like this, the program manager on Windows 3.1, obviously this isn't exactly that, but it was uh, just, such an improvement to me, my brother and mom and dad and family and friends and you know, anybody that used a computer it was as simple as just going down the bottom left click and there it is. Like it's muscle memory almost immediately and it still is decades later. So uh, thank you very much, Daniel, for your immeasurable contribution to computing. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, I think it's great.